Hi guys, this is Kevin here. I'm one of your lecturers from CATC and I handle the drawing amongst many other units. Today I've met my friend Marie at her unit, lovely unit in Caribilly in Sydney, and she's going to be doing a demonstration of marker rendering. So Marie has a light box. She um, obviously working in the industry. She has the, all the materials that one would use professionally. But if a student wanted to work this way, they could simply use a window and you can have your image behind your paper as you work. Starting with the shape of the face and the head first. Using broad shapes. Get the essential form down. This is the way I draw, it's not the way everybody draws. So cheekbones, jaw. Get the essential information the likeness comes from the shapes, hairline, it's not going to be completely accurate. I think what some students may feel too at this point is that, but I can never draw that fast and just reminding you that Marie's been working in this industry for a few years, she, she has done this a bit before, played right. this game before as they say, so you're not expected to work this quickly but it's a good indication of how um, a drawing is built up in layers. And also if the way I draw is in patches, I don't try and do a curve, accurate curve. Sure. Because things can be fixed later. So that's the essential shapes. The eyebrow. Oops. <laughs> Not perfect, but it gets the idea. Okay. Top of the eyes. Oops. Certain amount is achieved through line, certain amount is achieved through tone. Oh, her eyes are out, Kev. That's not important at this point. You're demonstrating the approach. You're not expected to be perfect. <laughs> but these can be fixed up when you put the markers on. So just down here, just going to go through. Because these are the darkest areas, this is why I'm using the pen to define them, because they're actually going to get lost. All the rest of it is going to be defined through tone. Sure. Oh. Rubber. Get rid of some information, but not entirely. start with the lights, I think. So give her a skin tone. Work over it. Blend it. Oh. Wow, so you're just blocking in 
time period, not yeah. worrying about where it goes. Well, in their face. yeah, this is just the skin tone, so I'm just going to give her a skin tone. But you've got to work quick. Why is that? Um, just so the colours aren't patchy. Sure. And you can... But you can use that to your advantage if you want to. Because when you work over a certain colour, you can add, you can make it subtly darker or lighter. So oh. while that's still wet, go to the next dark colour. Work out where your light source is. That's in the photograph anyway. This is difficult because it's got a line on that side of her face, so I'm going to make it up. <laughs> you are allowed to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it just defines her features. It's not overly accurate, but it doesn't matter. looks like her. camera here, I'm just going to come a bit closer. <coughs> some form around the chin. It's not beautifully accurate, it's just giving the impression and that's all the visual is. So that's the next darkest tone. It's not going to look like it, but look here. it's going to give the impression. Okay, so I'm going to go for it to quite a dark colour now. Lock in the eyes. Lock in the eyebrows. Oops. So you're just leaving little dots of light the highlights on the eyes while you do the fill in that circle. Yep. I mean this can be put in later with pastel. Sure. See how patchy that is? Well, while your pen's wet, you can go over and make things even darker. And you can leave things to dry and go over again to make it darker. It just depends what you want. coming from above this cast in the shadow under the top lip and under the bottom lip. Yeah, and also under the chin. Yeah. This mark is probably a bit dark but gets the idea across. So now we've defined a light source. up her features a bit more. Let me 
we can go one darker. Slightly lighter marker. So you're still experiencing the fact that the marker is wet on wet. Yep. So the ink is actually blending in rather than causing too dramatic a stripe against its colour that it's going over, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, you can use the marker to its advantage, whether you blend it in or, you know, keep it hard or blend it in. I think I've just stuck it the right. <laughs> but we can fix that. I think students might be interested in how you fix things as well, because nothing more disheartening than spending a long time and then going, oh no, I've made a mistake, how do I have to start again? Well, the drawing wasn't completely accurate, so I've tried to fix it up through um, where I put the tone. So even though it might be uh, not 100% accurate, the drawing, you can use tone to define things and shift things. Oh, uh, great. So, um, just adding a bit of shadow there. Because I'm working so close, I can't really see. When you say working so close, as opposed to sitting in front of someone painting a portrait? Yeah, it's difficult to see the tone up close. But anyway, that, that's as finished as anything needs to be in, the, in my advertising world anyway. Anything else I need to do, Kev, do you think? No, I think that's really good. It shows people how much information you can get in there, working very quickly and confidently. Even without the skills, if you were to do that many times over, you would start to build up your skill and your confidence. Mm. And the good thing about markers is they're designed so you can work quickly. So even if you... Yeah, so woman. what we have here is a marker rendering, which is not meant to be a portrait, which has been a great deal more time, but it shows you how working with markers can give you a very good approximation. And here, just zooming in, showing you the way some of the ink is working with itself. If you want to add highlights, get a piece of chalk. Add highlights. <laughs> That's it. Simple as that. Uh, if you wanted to. Fantastic. 